Uh, well, hello and uh, welcome back. Um, so in the last part of the video, uh, we saw how the integral of the function 1 over z um, around a simple uh, closed contour which circles the origin once was non-zero and it turns out to be uh, 2 pi i. Um, and we also saw that this result or this value is independent of the path or the, or the, or the particular choice of the contour as long as, as, as long as it's a simple contour which encircles the origin once. Uh, you would get the same result. Now, uh, one of the things that remains for us to see is, um, is the function 1 over z analytic or not? Because that's the only other thing which remains um, remains to be tested uh, considering that the integral of this function along the closed contour is non-zero. Um, so so let's, in, in this part of the video, let's look at the analyticity of 1 over z and then we'll, we'll see uh, what that um, leads to. So, uh, so we have the function. Um, wz equals 1 over z and again to check for its analyticity we have to appeal to the Cauchy Riemann conditions and so uh, as usual I'll put a link to the video uh, where we've talked about the Cauchy Riemann conditions but uh, the usual way of doing this uh, for a function of this form is uh, we need to find the real and imaginary parts of the function wz um, and, and, and again just like we did in the last part of the video we can multiply and divide uh, by z bar and this leads us to an expression of the form x divided by x squared plus y squared minus i y divided by x squared plus y squared. And so u is x divided by x squared plus y squared and v uh, which is the imaginary part is minus y divided by x squared plus y squared. And so now, now we need to uh, evaluate the partial derivatives to check, uh, uh, to, 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 to check the cauchy riemann conditions. So, uh, so once, so if, if you look at the real part u and you evaluate its partial derivative with respect to x, which is du dx, we find that just differentiating this once with respect to x, we find we get something like x squared plus y squared whole square, and the numerator, numerator would have um, x squared plus y squared minus 2x squared, uh, which amounts to y squared minus x squared divided by x squared plus y squared whole square. Um, the, 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 the next part of uh, the Cauchy Riemann condition that we need to check, so we need to compare du dx with dv dy. So let's take the imaginary part and differentiate this once with respect to y. So dv dy uh, would be, again, the, by following the same process, we'll find that this is x squared plus y squared whole square and there's a minus y there so that will be minus of x squared plus y squared um, plus y times uh, 2y squared and so if you if we subtract these things out we'll find that this is again y squared 2y squared minus y squared minus x squared divided by x squared plus y squared whole square um, and you can repeat this process for du dy and dv dx and see what you get. Uh, essentially, they will amount to algebraic expressions which are similar. Uh, but there's one thing I, I, I would like to point out here. So if you look at this expression and this expression, uh, both of them uh, seem to be equal to each other. Um, and in general, this is true for all values of x and y uh, which are non-zero. And this is where uh, the where where, where uh, all the all all the, all, the, all the sort of source of uh, the interesting behavior of the function one over z comes from. Um, so so what I'm trying to say here is uh, let's just get rid of this and just write these two things together. So we can claim that du dx, which is y square minus x square divided by x square plus y square whole square, is equal to dv dy which is again y squared minus x squared divided by x squared plus y squared whole squared as long as both x and y are not simultaneously zero or in other words as long as z is not zero or x equals zero and y equals zero is not true simultaneously. And the reason uh, this is important is because when x and y both are simultaneously zero if I put in x equals 0 and y equals 0 here, we'll find that this expression is of the form 0 divided by 0 uh, at z equals 0. And likewise, this expression, which is similar, is exactly the same as the previous expression, is of the form 0 by 0. And it's not okay 
for us to equate uh, two quantities which are of the form zero by zero. Uh, and, and, and again, you can do, the, do, 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 uh, do a similar exercise for the other uh, sort of partial derivatives for du dy and dv dx. And we'll find an expression of the form 2xy divided by x squared plus y squared whole squared, which is again of the form 0 by 0. And so uh, what we can say about the function 1 over z then is that the function is analytic everywhere, which comes out from it satisfying the Cauchy demand conditions everywhere except at the origin. Um, now, if you go back to uh, the function itself, wz, which is 1 over z, uh, we can see from here what's happening at the origin. As you approach the origin, the magnitude of this function, which we can write as modulus of this, which is 1 over modulus of z. Um, and in fact, we use polar coordinates, which is if I write z as r e to the power of i theta, we'll find that the magnitude is just 1 over r. Right? And as you approach the origin, origin, uh, so in the limit that z approaches 0, modulus of wz is actually approaching infinity. So the function is becoming unbounded. Such a point, such an isolated or single point um, at which the magnitude of a function, which is otherwise analytic everywhere around that point, uh, such an isolated point where the magnitude of the function becomes unbounded is called a singular point or sometimes known as a singularity of a function. So here we can claim in fact that z equals 0 is a singular point of the function. Um, in fact, this idea can be generalized to other kinds of functions. So, um, and, and I'll also try and make a separate video for to discuss further about singular points and singularities. Essentially, there are two kinds of singularities. Uh, the kind of singularity we are referring to here is also sometimes called a pole of the function. So you can imagine uh, like the two-dimensional complex plane and at the origin, you can imagine like a pole standing right at the origin where the magnitude of the function just blows up. And that's why this is sometimes called a pole of a function. Um, so, in fact, this argument can be generalized to any function of the form uh, 1 over z. And in fact, the singularity could occur at other points other than the origin, which we can write as z minus z naught to the power of m. And let's for now focus uh, for m greater than 0 and m belonging to integers. So for any function of this form, as you approach z0, as z approaches z0, uh, we have a zero in the denominator of the function, which essentially implies that the magnitude of the function will blow up. And m here corresponds to the order of the singularity or order of the pole of the function, order of the singularity. So for the function wz equals one over z, which has a singularity at the origin, the order m is just one. Um, and, and sometimes this is also called a simple pole. Uh, you could also consider a function of the form 1 over z square, for instance, which again has a singularity at the origin, but then m is 2, the order, it, 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 it has an order 2, and this is sometimes called a double pole. Um, so, so what we find, just to summarize what we've done so far, uh, we have established two things. The integral of the function 1 over z um, around a simple closed contour which encircles the origin once is non-zero uh, and, and its value actually is 2 pi i. The value of this integ integral is not dependent upon the choice of the contour. And thirdly, uh, the function wz equals 1 over z is analytic everywhere in the complex plane except at the origin. So perhaps, uh, and, and, the, and, and, and the way we say, the, the way we, the, the technical word for that is that the function one over z has a singularity at z equals zero. So uh, it seems that the singularity which occurs at the origin has an important role to play in the value of the integral that we got, which is two pi i. Um, and it, it seems, it, it might, a natural question that comes about it, comes about is, okay, what about other functions which might have a singularity at the origin? So for instance, what about the function wz equals one over z square? 
what is the value of the integral of this function around a simple contour which encircles the origin once. Uh, what is the value of this integral? And, and, and I'll just leave that as a short, uh, I'll invite you to do that as a short exercise and see what you get out of this. Um, you'll see, uh, you, you'll perhaps be surprised by the result. Um, and, and, but, 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 but that's where, uh, and, and that's, that's the reason uh, the, the, uh, the previous video I, I, I referred to, at, referred to as one of the most important integrals uh, in the study of complex analysis is that of the integral of one over z. So, uh, so please, uh, when, if you have some time, please try this out. And in the next part of the video, we'll build on this, this idea further and discuss the special uh, significance of the integral of one over z. Um, so hopefully this was of some use and I'll make a separate video also on singularities just to discuss uh, these, these ideas a little, a little more. Uh, especially, um, there's another kind of singularity called this essential singularity. So we we'll just sort of refer to that in, in, in that video. Um, but, but in the next part of this video, let's build on this idea further and see uh, what all can be learned from uh, the integral of the function 1 over z. So hopefully this was of some use and, um, and hopefully the uh, mic quality, my, the, the mic has improved the audio quality which some of you had uh, suggested uh, in your comments. Uh, so thanks for watching and uh, take care. Uh, hope, hopefully all of you are keeping well and safe under the conditions. So uh, hope to see you soon. Thanks for watching.